think it does turn into like a tunnel vision straight ahead when you're trying to go really fast. You don't really have time to concentrate on anything else because everything moves past you so quickly. One of my favorite segments is the Flying 200. The actual part which is recorded is from that white line. So you like can prepare for like half a lap before building up speed and then you just want to sit down and sprint. The QOM time here is something ridiculous, like so fast. But you can always kind of strive for that and get closer and closer. I think why here is a segment specifically is always going to be exciting for me. It's the kind of first place where I really had fun on a bike and also went fast. And then I felt like I was quite good at it and got encouraged to do more sessions. That was a really good pathway into the sport. My school doesn't finish till 10 past four. And so I won't be home till like five. And if I have a session at six, that is a very kind of quick changeover. It's grab something to eat, get changed. I'm quite lucky that my school has been really helpful about these things. Like if I need to, I can take like a Wednesday afternoon off, which is normally like my PE session, and I can go out for a bike ride or just rest before I have like track league. On the weekends, I get up at eight for a ride on a Sunday, and then I can be back by like 12. And I think a lot of my friends are kind of only just kind of getting out of bed at that time. It is really cool that you used to be in Olympic Velodrome and in the pavilion there's like a timeline which shows you all the kind of important, cool, exciting stuff that happened. You can compare yourself to all the pro riders when they were like my age or younger, starting, you know, their professional cycling career and now they're wanting to achieve really cool things. This place is all about like community and volunteering. Just 15 pounds to have a child here every weekday. You always joke that like it's the cheapest childcare you're gonna get in London. And I know so many people that started this way. In the last couple of years, there's been like a lot of effort to get loads and loads of races in, which is really great for the community. Some people just aren't even competitive. You know, they just come and watch, but the competitive side of it, pushing yourself to the limits is also equally fun. One of my favourite segments on the track is from the back straight. So one lap not from the start line, and that's actually a segment on Strava. It's a random effort, you don't naturally do that in a race, but at the same time, because of when there's like time trial events, that kind of thing, that's when you kind of do that singular effort from like a random place on the track, and then you can look on Strava and see your time for them. Through cycling here, I've actually got quite a few opportunities. Like, I was able to be a ride leader. I've even got like a coaching qualification so I can volunteer and help out with sessions. So I'm really looking forward to actually being able to like coach. I think since I've started racing, I've always kind of considered maybe becoming like an actual cyclist. I'm really tempted to see your career in track. In terms of university, it's kind of made things easier in a way because I can look at unis and be like, oh, what's their cycling team like? It's just an extra thing to help find the perfect place. And I probably wouldn't have been able to be in like this situation if it weren't for all the people at the track that put my name forward. I love being able to just ride my bike freely. As long as it's fun, I'll do it.